NASA has performed the unthinkable, converting carbon dioxide into pure, breathable oxygen. It's marked the first experimental extraction of a natural resource from the environment of another planet. NASA's rover led the exhibition. It's hoped the technology will help future missions live off the land of another planet. Well, for more on this, let's go live to our space expert, Brad Tucker. He's the astrophysicist and cosmologist at ANU. Brad Tucker, this is extraordinary. NASA converting carbon dioxide into breathable oxygen. This sounds like a game changer. It really is. You know, this has been one of the key instruments on Perseverance. You know, we've heard a lot about Ingenuity uh, and this drone, but Perseverance has really got on with this job because the key here is most of Mars is carbon dioxide. The majority of its atmosphere is carbon dioxide. Now, that's fine for plants, uh, but we obviously need oxygen to breathe. And you don't want to bring all of the oxygen you need to support humans to Mars with us. It's too complicated and too expensive. But if you can convert it into oxygen, that is amazing. And so they were able to produce five grams of oxygen, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it's enough for about a human to breathe for about 15 minutes. So a very small test case, they were able to produce, as you said, breathable oxygen. And at the same time, oxygen is also gonna be a key ingredient in rocket fuel and energy creation on Mars as well. So a big step in the right direction for, as you said, not just exploring uh, Mars, but even other places in the solar system. Yeah, is this going to be a big step in helping future holidays to different planets? Look, maybe the distant future, that's exactly right. You know, because even on a holiday, you know, you don't go and take all of your food and all of your fuel with you. You buy it there. It's too heavy. You don't want to pay for the extra baggage charges. And they're therefore too expensive. And it's the same thing with getting to Mars. You just can't bring it all with you from Earth. It's not a long-term viable solution. So whether it's going to be on the moon, not necessarily with carbon dioxide, but with doing this with water, a similar process, or on Mars with carbon dioxide or other places potentially in the solar system, this is going to be the key. And the fact that it did work and they were able to do it relatively quickly and successfully is now going to pave the way for it to do it more and longer. And in fact, you can imagine the future that can actually start producing this just all the time and actually start building up reserves of oxygen on Mars for when future missions go there. Yeah, future's looking good for space travel. NASA, a NASA helicopter has achieved its first flight on Mars. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, this has been a very big week for Mars. You know, we have this great result from Perseverance, and along with Perseverance was Ingenuity, this helicopter drone. And so Monday night, it took its first flight. This was the first essentially powered flight uh, anywhere in the universe from Earth, obviously. Uh, you know, and this was an amazing feat of technology, and it only went up three meters, only did a little bit of a hop. But because that atmosphere is so different on Mars, but they didn't know if it was going to be able to work, they had to power a craft that was able to do this. Uh, and as soon as they were able to do it, they said, look, we know we can fly on Mars and we know the technology works. And now they've already performed their second flight just yesterday. They went a little bit higher, up to about five meters, and then they started to go side to side. So what we're going to start seeing now over the next month or as long as the batteries last is they're going to start flying this drone as high and as far as possible to both prove the technology, but also to actually start helping to explore and aid uh, the mapping and surface of Mars. They're incredible pictures there. It's um, a big week for space news. As you said, busy, happening, a lot happening on Mars. It's also getting crowded on the International Space Station. They're running out of sleeping pods there. They are right. So, in fact, uh, later tonight at about 7.40, 7.50 p.m. local Australian time, uh, four more astronauts will be sent to the space station. Now, that will bring the total to 11. So, firstly, this will be the most time or the biggest amount of crew or astronauts on the space station. Normally, there's only three. Uh, and, you know, the space station is about the size of a five-bedroom house. So, you know, it's one thing to have three people, maybe five people each go to your own room. Eleven people, you start to become a little bit cozy in there. In fact, as you said, they're going to run out of beds. Two are going to actually have to sleep in the SpaceX crew capsule, and another two are going to have to rotate and share sleeping quarters uh, until the next batch of astronauts come back down uh, later next week. So it's becoming really busy in space, but actually this is the exact uh, product of private space travel because SpaceX now can take people and not just rely on the Russian Soyuz. We're going to start seeing this problem more and more of having a very busy space station. It's going to be the, the place to be.
Yeah, I have to put hotels up there. Um, finally, Brad Tucker, we're running out of time, but on Tuesday, Australia will be treated to a supermoon in the evening. So this is one that we're supposed to be getting outside for. That's right. So all across Australia, uh, right around sunset, when the full moon will be rising, we'll get a spectacular full moon. But it's also what we call a super moon. So that's when the moon is actually a bit closer to the Earth. The moon's orbit wobbles or varies by about 50,000 kilometers. And so because it's closer, it's a bit bigger and a bit brighter. So it's definitely going to be a sight to see. So enjoy a nice Tuesday evening. Enjoy a beautiful sunset, hopefully wherever you are. And then look towards the east and you'll see a beautiful big full moon rising over the horizon. Looking forward to it. Brad Tucker, thank you so much. Thanks.